Druidry is a very shamanic path for many people. And if you're looking for ways to integrate shamanic practices and druidry a bit more, this is an excellent book. Hey there saplings, welcome back to Esoteric Moment. We've got a book review today and it is The Druid Shaman by Danu Forrest. If you can't tell by the videos lately, we are totally going into the dark half of the year here because all that's on my mind is like meditation, reflection, journaling, my practice activities are changing and really like, how do I focus on the inward? How do I, you know, grow and expand that underworld part of my practice? This happens to me every fall and winter. I don't know if it's the same for you. If it is the same, this is a great book for autumn reading. I read this as an ebook. It was excellent. The book begins by talking about the Celt historical references. I always feel a little iffy about calling some of this research about Celts historical because I am not a history major, so I'm not in the best position to decide what is a reliable source and what isn't a reliable source. From my perspective, this seemed fairly legit, uh, but do your own cross-referencing, as always. Then it dives into the different ways that the shamanic practices connect to the Celtic past and the Druids of today. So there's a lot of preparation work, and each chapter has a good description of this kind of lesson or example of a shamanic practice and then has exercises at the end. Some really interesting chapters and topics that you don't see in all books were talking about time which is a really important element of druidry because if you are trying to gain wisdom about this world, about other worlds, time is crucial to that understanding. If you want to be a teacher or a magician, time is also very crucial. So that was a really interesting chapter in this book. It's also a bunch about kind of like local plants environments and a bunch about the spirit realm and different ways of looking at like the world tree and the other world those frames that are useful when deciding what practices help you connect better are described in a really clear way and provide some rooted and grounded ideas and metaphors that can help you as you adventure further on. There's also a bit about working with your animal spirit, so if that's something you're interested in, this book might be a great tool for you. Again, this isn't really a long book. It didn't take me very long to get through, but a lot of the practices can be built upon and revisited time and time and time again. I thought it was a useful addition to my practice and really enjoyed reading it. Maybe not one that I would keep on my physical bookshelf. I'm glad I own the digital copy, but I definitely put this on a library checkout list, not a purchase, unless it is an ebook version. Druidry touches on shamanic practices a lot, but this was interesting to read because it was heavily focused on really like visibly and consistently connecting the two different worlds and approaches to these practices in, in one combined look. So I think it will be very useful to many druids out there or people who are just looking to add more shamanic elements to their own practices. This week's sapling shout out goes out to Revolution724. They went back and visited an old video where I talk about having confidence in wearing your pagan symbols or druid symbols, and they talked about their tree of life, which I thought was just beautiful. Uh, I love it when you guys go back to old videos too. If you want to be a sapling shout out, leave a comment below where you talk about how fall or the change in season wherever you are is affecting what kind of books and activities you're focused on in your practice. Thanks for watching and as always may you find peace in the sacred grove. Uh -huh.